Kia ora te whanau. Today we're here with Mark. Mark's recently finished the online 30-day Te Reo Māori boot camp course and he's jumped on the call tonight to share some of his experiences and give us a few insights into what the course was like for him. So kia ora, bro. Kia ora, Grant. Kia ora, whanau. Thank you for jumping on, bro. Um, I guess maybe a little bit of a caveat before we get, jump into it. Uh, Mark and I have known each other for years and years and years, um, growing up in the same area. Um, so yeah, it's been been good to go through this course with you know someone that I know quite well, because uh, usually it's you know working with people from all over the world. So good to have someone that's just around the corner. So bro, give us a bit of an insight before you started the course. Uh, what was life like for you in regards to te reo, te ao Māori? Uh, I understand that you'd just done a recent trip back home and um, that might have played a big part of it. Can you just share with share with us um, what was life like, bro? So um, I've been fortunate enough um, to, to have grown up around Kapahaka. My parents always thought, instilled in us that culture was important. So that was um, a blessing, I guess. Um, so always been, you know, knowing the haka and going to uh, kapa haka sessions and staying up late, learning these waiatas. And um, at a young age, a lot of time, I was like, man, we're practising this song, you know, 10 times over and it felt like forever and you're falling asleep. But... Yeah, auntie's like, no, nah, you're not doing it properly. Do it again. So um, those little lessons um, <laughs> you might not like as a, a child, um, you don't forget them either. Uh, so um, I've always been around Māori um, um, in, in that sense, of, you know, and still now doing Kapahaka in Newcastle um, with Grant. Um, so I'm always find myself singing Waiata or, you know, walking around the house and doing a haka or, um, you know, trying my best to remember those little songs and hakas we, we learn at Kapa Haka and um, just trying also to teach my young young tamariki some of those words and just to get them into it. And um, they're definitely getting into it um, and starting to pick up the kupu and, yeah, I'm enjoying to seeing them learn. Um, the Māori, te reo Māori. And so, like you said, um, definitely I've been looking at Grant's course for over three years now. I think you've been running it or more. But it's definitely, I've definitely had a desire to do it. Um, but, yeah, just I've always sort of been busy with other commitments and I've just um, never found that time that I could fully commit um, to definitely giving it a good crack. Um, and also, I think I'm not going. I'm going to be fair, Dinkum, in this sense that I was like, oh, I know Grant set up this course, but I'd like to learn from someone from New Zealand, from Aotearoa, because you know maybe their knowledge would be would be you know profound, or you know I just had that in my mind, um, and that's definitely a stigma that um, you know some people may have. Um, mm, absolutely, and. Yeah, but like you said, I also did go to, yeah, I was privileged enough last year to be a part of a waka kaupapa. So that's learning, you know, how we, the chants of um, the waka and um, a lot of that. And so, yeah, a part of that, that journey we organised last year was to go back to uh, Waitangi 2020 in February. And um, I think that gave me a huge desire. Like I knew that trip was going to be special and it was. Um, and so that gave me that desire, the burning feeling, I guess, um, to definitely learn more of te reo Māori so we could, I could understand what a lot of they were speaking um, at, at the time when you're back on the marae and during that kaupapa. Yeah. Yeah, bro, there was a few of you that went back and you know, no talking to everyone that came back from that trip. Everyone just had profound changes in their outlook on life um, yeah. talking about things that they wanted to learn as a result of having gone over there but you know 
reflecting on where they'd been and um, where they actually want to go in life and that direction they want to take. Uh, yeah, it just must have been such a a spiritual journey for, for all you fellas that went back there. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely something special and um we I knew that it was going to be special just being, you know, you're surrounded by um Maldi the whole time, you're you're living on the Madai, you're training and doing the the Waka Kopapa, you know, from six o'clock when you wake up to to almost midnight and um yeah it was just surreal actually i was like oh i really want to move back to aotearoa just to i think it's something that i missed being brought up in aussie mm. that we didn't have the opportunity to do many wananga mm. um but you know it may be in due time but mm. um definitely it was an awesome experience yeah mm. Yeah, so so you guys were, uh, you were on the waka at Waitangi, like for Waitangi Day celebrations. You you were part of that that whole ropu. You got to you got to meet the prime minister too, didn't you? You were sitting next to her or something. Aye, aye. So yeah, there was we there was about twelve wakas. The the main one nga toki mata That's um I guess the main waka. Of, uh, te iwi ngā pui. Um, and and I guess you got to be a part of that Rōpū group to get on that waka. But there is another group that has some other wakas. So we were part of, I guess, the smaller wakas, but I'm um, still, I guess, side by side with the main waka there. So yeah, it was an awesome experience. And yeah, like you said, um, I think our first three days there, we were always had planned activities. Um, around the far north area and every day first three days I think um, the Prime Minister Jacinda was at all of these three occasions that you know we had planned to go to um, some was up north in um, my father's hometown in Pangaru that was our first day that she went there to um, unveil the statue of uh, Finna Cooper um, so that was our first meeting and then she came to our Waitangi camp um, right there near the water there to um, say hello and to um, uh, fulfill a a, me, a a goal or a a duty she she said to the tamariki of the group they seen her during the year in 2019 at parliament and they asked her if she would come visit them at Waitangi 2020 at their base camp and mm-hmm. so she was fulfilling fulfilling you know that that duty that she said she would. Um, so that was awesome to see the Prime Minister there and sit down with us and court it all. And we were lucky to to do our, the haka, um, the waka haka that is especially um, uh, for, the, for that kaupapa um, to her. And I must say it's the longest haka I've had to learn. But, you know, when there's 150 of us, it was probably the most powerful haka I've been a part of. Um, so that's yeah that was a pretty awesome experience awesome bro so so they're all your experiences uh leading up to the course and um from there then you jumped on board after yeah what two and a half years three years of checking it out um so like for you were there any obstacles to jumping on the course um i think you actually spoke about that earlier this this sort of idea about that, you know, maybe someone that lives in New Zealand may have more credit than you would maybe give someone here. And right. I don't take any offence to that. That's, you know, a perfectly yeah. reasonable thing to think of. I, I often get comments on my YouTube videos, which are, you know, the, all the instructional style videos uh, and lessons and, and people are like writing things like, why is why does this guy sound like an Australian or why is there an Aussie teaching yeah. our real? You kind of got to go, well, if you maybe watched the intro video, you understood the cope up of it all. Um, but yeah, bro, I, I think that's, that's um, completely reasonable and, and probably something that yeah, potentially a lot of people might be thinking. Right. And yeah, no, and that's, I think um, it could be a prideful thing too. Um, possibly but 
um, I think if you really want to learn the real, you you move past that, mm. and you get over that because you know I did actually. I've been looking online and I was like, oh, I wonder if there is any other beginning courses. I'll just check it out. Um, and I've asked some people where my father's from, Napui, because naturally, you know, there's different dialects and, mm. you know, how different are they? Would I want to talk like someone down the line or would I like to try and talk like um, someone from my own tribe or from Napui area? Um, so... That was another reason I was like, oh, thinking of trying to do other courses. Mm -hmm. However, yeah, I asked another gentleman that has a page on Facebook, but he, you know, openly said that his course or his his material isn't for beginners. Mm -hmm. and, and I was like, oh, okay, well, I can't find anything else. And I really want to learn to do Māori. And Grant's, I've known, I've known Grant for a while that he set up this course. So I thought, well, there's no better time like now. Um, I guess with the lockdown rules, even in Australia, some of my normal commitments had freed up. So I did feel I had some, a little bit more time to commit. Um, but yeah, and I, I'm so grateful that I did choose to do it because, you know, I've had a lot of Māori language books or te ranga, te ranga tahi books that I've had for, you know, almost 10 years and I've tried to do, go through them, but there's nothing more better than actually conversing with people um, and, and practising that zeal by communicating with others, yeah. Mm. Yeah, absolutely, bro. Um, it's, you know, there's, there's plenty of resources out there. There's plenty of books out there. Um, and this course really just gives you an opportunity to be held to account to actually committing to doing it. Like you can have a book, but if you, if you never pick it up and read it, well, there's no point. Whereas you can jump on this course oh, and God. you know, you're, you're accountable to me. I hold you to account. You, we work in the accountability groups and you know, your, your peers then uh, are holding you to account. And I know that your group uh, worked very well with that and you fellas were really active during the whole period. So, uh, yeah, even just from an accountability perspective, um, yeah, it's, it's just, it, it just can change the, the behaviour and the mindset around, around learning and, um, yeah, it can really help push you forward. Cool, bro. So uh, you've gone through the course. Uh, obviously come out the other side and um, and finished it for you what was the the biggest result you got from the course um, for myself I think it's pretty much learning and which is what my my goal was I guess was starting to learn more about sentence structure and how I can talk and communicate more in yeah um, you know putting sentences together which you know Around the house before I started this course, um, I'm mainly only saying, you know, one words here or there, but not saying a, a actual complete sentence. Um, so, yeah, from this course, I've learned basic sentence structures um, to help, you know, me on the right path to then, you know, building sentences. And I think that's the biggest thing is, um, you know, you can have these books that teach you the kupu or a single word, mm. but they're not really going to teach you how to put those words into a sentence um, and correct sentence structure. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that was the biggest one for me, I must admit. Yep. So learning learning sentence structure. Oh, yeah. It can be a bit dangerous if all you've got is a, a dictionary because the a single word can only get you so far. <laughs> Yes, that's right. And yeah. I know because like yourself, like you said, you know, we have this Aussie twang to our accents mm. and um, some people, you know, hold that. I don't want to get off this track, but um, mm. but I guess I try and s sort of put some te reo mould in and just create my own sentence structure some days. Mm. And I know it's not grammatically correct. Um, and so that's why I need to, you know, make sure I am doing my best to make sure it's right. Mm. And look, I, I think from a, a, a learning perspective, um, 
even if you you're learning like if you learn a word a single word and you start using it in a sentence like you just you say an english sentence and you replace a word um an english word with a maori word uh, that's that's still a good way to learn you're still learning the you're still learning a new language. now if you flip that and you can start to learn a the structure of a sentence in tarel and you might know that structure and you might know how to say that sentence 10 different ways let's say there might be words that you don't know to fit in there but you want to talk about so you can still use that sentence structure and maybe you just have to replace one or two words with the english word because you don't quite have the 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 equivalent in tare or maori that's that's just as good that's a that's a great way to learn because you're still reinforcing the structure and you're getting that uh you know a lot of people call it that the fakar or maori around how to think and you might be using an english word but the structure of your thoughts is generally different in tarel than it is in in english so um yeah you can you can start to build that even though you know you don't have all the tarel kupu that that fit within that structure um, by putting the English ones in there, you're still you're still going through that process of learning. Oh uh, yes, I totally agree. Even tonight, I'm actually starting to, I guess, sometimes switch. Like I was thinking tonight, I was like to my son, "Where's the spoon?" And I was like, well, "I don't need to say that in English. I could say kehete mm. pune." And, and like, that's what just came out. And I'm like, oh, that's me. Right. Mm. And then he's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. And he's, yeah, it's, it's cool. They, they do pick up a lot. The, mm. um, somebody has, the more you say it, yeah. they definitely pick it up. And so if you've got that structure around kai hea te something, where is the something? Um, you know, you can use that structure. Kai hea te yeah. bug spray. That's all right. Okay. You know, okay, yeah. you don't know the word for spoon. Okay, here to spoon. Okay, here to calculator. Right. You're at least going through that process, the fakar or Māori of using that, that Māori sentence structure. And then it just becomes a case of right. getting a, a solid base in some, you know, really standard sentence structures and, and starting to fill the gaps in with new words. Mm. Okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Right. Cool, bro. So, uh, having done the course, you know, we've got the accountability groups, we've got our lessons, our homework, our activities that we do, uh, the live videos, the, um, you know, the, the conversing with our peers, all the rest of it. For you, what was a specific feature of the course that you enjoyed most? Or, or maybe, let me reframe that, maybe something that was the most efficient in, in your learning or for you to learn. Okay. I find that how you've set up your structure, like it's very simple, which I'm a simple person and that helps my own learning. So you normally have, you know, your lesson of the day and you, you, you give a, um, a post on the lesson, what we're learning about today. All right. So, and then you explain that you go through it and it's not very long either. Like I must, which is good because too much information I think becomes a bit overwhelming for many people. So I liked how normally your lesson was specific and fairly simple to understand and, and wasn't too in depth I found to. So your homework was after your lesson and then we also had our accountability groups. I think just how you structured how your program is, is structured, your course is set out. I just find that very, that's simple. And I, I do like learning that way where it's everything structured, it's organized and it's fairly I found. And yeah, but I actually, I did love our accountability groups. And that's what I was talking about before, where you can call it all Māori and practice on, you know, the lesson that you taught for that day or maybe go over a couple of, at the end of the week, just go over five lessons 
um, or the parts that we struggled with as a group we would do and just, you know, come up with ideas or, you know, try and help each other learn um, stuff that we didn't understand. If we had questions, we'd ask our group and then if we still didn't know, we'd ask yourself again, we'll send you a message. So um, those groups were awesome and um, definitely, a, yeah, a good way to learn. Nice, bro. The, the, uh, you know, the lessons are very simple. Like I say in the course, a, a lot of them are, most of them are uh, structured so they build on each other. You know, it's not like yes. we're sort of bouncing around learning one thing one day, then doing a complete shift to learning something else and then shifting the next day and learn something else. We just yeah. keep building in layers. Just keep building. Exactly. Up. So when you're incorporating your day 16 when you do your day 16 lesson and homework well day 17 is actually a bit of revision from the day before and you already know that so you, you're pulling yeah. that forward and you, you're kind of just yeah building 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 up in layers mm. yeah exactly yeah and that's what we definitely liked and my the group i was in uh, with frank and dave yeah we we started going over the the lessons again and I guess just going over them so we sort of can commit to our memory and mm. try to remember them better and make it more practical for our everyday um, use. So that, that's cool. And we're pretty much doing the same thing that you set it, set out instruction for the course. So it's cool. Nice bro. Nice. So if someone's at home watching this video, considering doing the course, um, would you, recommend that they take the course and if so why i would definitely 100 percent recommend this course and i'm not saying that just because i'm a friend of grants that's um not the case i had done my own research and to me there isn't a better beginner course out there most of the courses out there are normally catered to intermediate or advanced learners and there's not the ones that are beginner courses um, I don't think they teach you as much in depth about um, sentence structures and how to start speaking and conversing in Tanel Māori. Not only speaking, but also reading, um, you know, reading, writing, um, and then conversing. You, you know, there's, you need to do all three. Um, and I think just the way you structure this course, bro, is um, just awesome. And... And that's why I definitely recommend it to other people. And, you know, don't be prideful because um, this Aussie Māori is um, teaching people how to speak Māori. Um, and so that's awesome. Like, it's actually, I uh, definitely, um, I guess, look up to you in that fact that you, you, you're you doing that. And that's something I really, um, yeah, I really admire, I guess. Mm. Thank you, bro. I really appreciate you saying that. I really do. No, Thank you. Um, yeah, I, like from my perspective, the the core, like there's there's heaps of content out there already. Like, I don't yeah. need to write another book, another language book. There's plenty of those out there. Um, oh, yeah. Where I see my value for people is that. I took up a challenge to learn myself as an adult and I, I, I see that I can help bridge that gap between what you do know with what you don't know. So rather than just throwing you in the deep end um, and, and um, yeah, throwing you in the deep end and, and having you try and learn things that are completely foreign to you, uh, I, I try and frame the lessons, the homework. I try and frame everything in a way that you can relate to and that you can understand. And for a lot of new learners, yes. that is putting things within the, starting things in the framework of, of English, because we understand that it's our first language. Most, most, most of us, um, you know, that are English speakers, that's our first language. So if you can frame it in something familiar, and then show how that connects to something that's unfamiliar. You can you can bridge that gap a lot 
a lot easier rather than just throwing you in the deep end with it and kind of hoping for the best. This is the way you do it, way you go and do it. Uh, yeah, just, just trying to build that gap between, bridge the gap between what's familiar and what's not familiar um, to make that transition mm. process uh, a lot easier. And yeah, I've been running this course for a while now, had quite a few refinements and uh, this is where we're at today. You having finished the most recent course and uh, yeah, it's, it's doing well, bro. I, I think we're, we're kicking some goals and there's a lot of people um, taking up the challenge and, and learning on the way, learning along the way. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I, I know you're helping a lot of people learn our culture and our, our real, and that's, um, you know, I think that's why we're all interested in learning the real is to make sure it doesn't, um, I guess, die, um, so to speak, but we, we keep it uh, rejuvenating it and for the next generation so we don't forget what our you know where we come from and you know um while we're here i guess yeah 100 percent, bro 100 percent. that gets us to the end of our our questions bro if there's someone watching this at home in 12 months time 10 years time 20 years time is there any final thoughts that you'd like to share? Anything else that you'd like to add before we wrap up? Um, maybe one thought, and, and that's, it's going to sound a bit mad, but I guess another reason why I really want to learn Te Reo Māori is because, um, you know, naturally our loved ones are going to pass one day. And growing up in Aussie, how often our trips back to New Zealand were for tonguies. So, you know, they weren't always a good trip back home, but they were for a tonguey. And so I just think about, you know, when my, my own parents pass, I want to send them off the way that I've, you know, the traditional way, with the way that their ancestors were sent off. And that's by, um, yeah, called it all and yes, yeah, speaking and saying those 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 prayers and waitas um, for their last trip, and that's something that you know is in my heart that I think about, and that's I guess one of my whys. So, yeah, mm, that's, that is unique, bro. I've never heard anyone say that before, but that is it's deep, beautiful. Deep, sorry. No, no, that's that's great. That's that's awesome, bro. It's like, you know, you, you're going on this. It's almost like you're going on this journey, and and your goal is to to give your parents that that final thing that you can offer them, mm. and that's that's a send off in the proper way. Right. And. Yeah, bro. I, you know, I've known your parents for a long time, and they're beautiful people. Beautiful people. So cool, bro. That's that's awesome, bro. That is awesome. No, thank bro, you, well, Grant. Hope, and yeah. Thank you, bro. I uh, I have no doubt that you will keep excelling on this journey, and um, you know, we'll we'll have a lot more more mahi to do together. Um, locally in this area we got we got a lot of people to help a lot of families in this area that are looking for the same thing through you know we're involved in our culture group as well locally with lots of families so um we've got more more work to do there as well to help people hi hi cool bro well look thank you for jumping on tonight thank you for taking the time out of your evening uh really appreciated and if there, anyone's watching at home um yeah, I hope you, hope you got a lot out of this conversation and what Mark had to share. Um, if you haven't already, please jump over to the Facebook group, starting in Tadel Māori. Uh, you can catch up with me. There's lots of people in there. Uh, you can ask any questions, get some great feedback for some really insightful people. Um, and, yeah, I'd love to have you over there. So, Mark, thank you, brother. Appreciate it. And we'll talk Thanks, to you. Thanks,